Hey guys, um, in this video I'm going to talk about the Euclidean division algorithm and what it helps with is it helps us find the greatest common divisor of any two uh, positive integers. So given any two positive integers, if you want to find their greatest common divisor, then the Euclidean division algorithm is your best friend. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, before I show you how the process works on these two examples, let's have a more broad but very important and short um, discussion about this algorithm. Okay, cool. Now, um, so more broadly, if you're saying that the greatest common divisor of two um, positive integers x and y is uh, the positive integer c, what you're saying is that c can be written as a linear combination of x and y. That is, we can write c as um, some integer a times x plus some other integer b times y. And one of a or b uh, is allowed to be negative. So a or b can be a negative number. But yes, to say that uh, you've successfully found the greatest common divisor of x and y is to say that you can write that greatest common divisor c as a linear combination of x and y. Now, a curious question has to be, why must this be true? Which is, if you can write uh, c as a linear combination of x and y, why is c necessarily uh, the greatest common divisor of x and y? Well, because, like, clearly, uh, the left side is divisible by c. So then, since the right side is also equal to c, the right side has to also be divisible by c, right? Here, c is clearly divisible by c. And what I'm saying is, then this also has to be divisible by c. But this has to be divisible by c means I can factor out a c from x and I can factor out a c from y. Notice I didn't say I can factor out a c from a or b because we don't know that c divides a or b. And frequently in examples, c doesn't divide a or b and therefore c must divide x and c must divide y, right? Okay, now if that was all too kind of abstract, I'll give you a particular example. Uh, and this will make sense. So uh, suppose you are seeking the GCD of 36 and 27 and ain't no need for uh, the Euclidean division algorithm. You know that this is 9. Now 9 as a linear combination of 36 and 27 is uh, the following. Uh, so 36 plus 27 and now we must adjust by multiplying the 36 by a positive 1 and the 27 by a negative 1, right? Okay, cool, cool. Um, all right. Now, um, so we have succeeded in writing c is equal to a times x plus b times y. And as I said, one of a or b uh, may be negative. But clearly, c doesn't divide a or b. And um, surely, c does divide x and y. Yeah? OK, cool, cool. So hopefully, this gives you a feel for why um, this uh, linear uh, combination idea is equivalent to saying that you found the correct GCD. All right, and in some classes, you're asked to find the, uh, the uh, linear combination of the GCD in terms of the original two. So I'll give you, um, along with uh, finding the GCD, I'll give you examples of how to do that with these uh, two guys. Yeah, okay, 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 cool, cool. So let's get started with this. So to start the process, you need to figure out how to write the larger of the two numbers uh, with a quotient uh, and a remainder, right? So um, the way to do this is uh, to just uh, divide the larger number by um, the smaller number and then go from there. So here, here, I'll show you on this first one. So 119 uh, divided by 51 is the same thing as uh, what's double 51, like uh, 102, so it's the same thing as 102 uh, plus 17 divided by 51, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so divided by, you can do long division instead of what I'm doing, but yeah, this is uh, kind of a quicker way to get there. And so then 119 divided by 50, uh, sorry, I don't like that horizontal sign, divided by 51 is equal to 102 divided by 51 is 2, and then plus 17 divided by 51, right? And then from here, multiply both sides of this equation by 51, and you'll be able to get to this form, right? And uh, by the way, a quick reminder is that every positive integer can be written in this form, right? Okay, cool. By the way, I had a video um, that I recorded for the same one, a previous recording, that I didn't keep only because on this part, I said every number can be written in this form, and obviously that's false. And I figured that there's like one nitpicky math person out there who's gonna 
uh, tell me I said something wrong. So I re-recorded this whole video so that on this part I can say every um, positive integer can be written in this form. Anyway, um, there it is. I hope it's worth it um, with my time. Anyway, 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 let's let's go forward. So the first step in the division algorithm process is always this line. But once you've uh, written um, this, the next step is to take this number and to write it in an equivalent form, which is to write it with a quotient uh, times a remainder by involving this number, right? So to take this number and write it in the quotient remainder form, which is this form, uh, but by involving this other number. Yeah, okay, so 51 in this case is equal to uh, 3 times 17, and then you get no remainder. So uh, the process is very short here, and it's very unusual in that, uh, that it's short. Like frequently it's um, longer than this, it's more than two steps, but here we're done. And the way we know we're done is because we're able to write a remainder of zero. So anytime you're able to write a remainder of zero in the sequence of steps, you know you're done. And the uh, greatest common divisor is the remainder in the previous line. Since we only have two lines here, two lines of steps, uh, the remainder uh, in the previous line would be 17, and that's the greatest common divisor. And well, we knew all along that uh, 17 is the greatest common divisor, which if I haven't said is because, well, 119 is 7 times 17 is, and 51 is 3 times 17, so we knew all along. Now, for the linear combination part, uh, frequently you'll have more than two steps. But in any case, go to the line where you have boxed your uh, greatest common divisor, and in that line, solve for your greatest common divisor. That is, isolate your greatest common divisor in the line where you have boxed it. So here, um, that would be that 17 there. So if we go to that line and isolate the greatest common divisor, we can write that 17 is equal to 119 minus 2 times 51. 119 minus 2 times 51, right? And we are done because we've just written, um, if I write out 1 times 119, if you feel better here, like, but it's pretty clear, right? We've, we've, and then if, well, I'll go all the way here. How about that? And let me put a plus sign there and then write a negative in front of the two and write over it in red so it's uh, consistent color coding, but whatever, whatever, right? So here we've got that um, C is A times B plus, sorry, C is equal to A times X plus B times Y, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And so on to the final example and we'll say we're done. Um, Oh yeah, another reason I re-recorded, and this is like my ninth re-recording, but yeah, another reason I re-recorded is because um, I wanted to make the video shorter, which I think I'm failing at right now. Um, but anyway, uh, in this example, your first step, as usual, is to figure out how to write uh, the bigger number, 2, 1, 3, 6, um, and the quotient remainder form. Here, the quotient is going to have to be 48. So you can write that this number is 48 times 44, and then the remainder this time is going to be 24, yeah? And then you know the deal. You have to write this in the same form, but by involving that number. So you go 44 is equal to, and then it's gonna be one times 24 um, plus uh, 20, right? Okay, and then now you write this by involving that in the quotient remainder form. So it's 24 is equal to, and then it's one times 20 uh, plus four, right? Okay, cool. And then next uh, is 20 is equal to uh, five times four plus zero. So the process is terminated. We just wrote a remainder of zero. Yeah, okay, cool. And we said uh, that the remainder in the previous step is going to be the greatest common divisor. And that's consistent with what I wrote there. And now uh, finally about the linear combination deal, right? So uh, as we said, we start with this line and isolate this guy, right? And if we do, then we can write the following, which is that four is equal to uh, 24 and then minus one times 20, right? Okay, cool. And now what we need to do is replace this 20. Uh, and how we're gonna do that is we come to this previous line and isolate this 20, right? And so then uh, from uh, this line here, we can write that, uh, we can write that uh, 20 is equal to uh, 44, which is one times 44, uh, minus one times 24, right? Okay, cool. 
So uh, we come back uh, to this line and write that 4 is equal to 24 minus 1 times 20 is this right here, which is 44 um, minus 1 times 24. Um, and uh, there's some simplifying you could do uh, here and what I just wrote uh, right here, right? And in particular, if you distribute this negative 1, then you could write the 4 is equal to 24 and then minus 1 times 44 and then uh, plus uh, 1 times 24. And it's clear that one copy of 24 and another copy make two copies. So 4 is equal to uh, 2 times 24 and then minus 1 times 44. We're almost there, right? And the only unused line is this, right? And so guess what we're going to do? Um, and this line here, in our very first line now, we're going to isolate 24 and then make a substitution for this 24 and then finally we'll be done, right? So we don't need a lot of other stuff I've written here, so let's get rid of everything we don't need. All right, so that's all this. Um, and uh, so now we have that um, from this line, like I said, we need to isolate 24. And so doing that would mean I've got 24 is equal to uh, 2136 minus 48 times 44, right? Okay, cool. And so um, substituting that for 24 right there, we have that 4 is equal to 2 times uh, 2136 minus 48 times uh, 44 um, and then minus 1 times uh, 44 right okay cool and so then that means 4 is equal to 2 times um, 3 well sorry 2 times 2136 and then minus 2 times 98 is 96 so minus 96 times 44 and then minus 1 times 44 right and then minus 1 times 44 okay cool so that means 4 is equal to 2 times um, 2 1 3 6 and then minus and then it's going to be 97 times 44 right okay and there we are we are done because we just wrote the 4 is equal to um, which is C is equal to a times um, x two one three six and then plus b um, times uh, y, which is uh, forty four, and so there we are. Yeah, cool. All right. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned a lot. Keep watching.